how to write a story. All right. okay. It's a mess. It's chaotic. You got to understand that before you do it. You don't sit down and say, once upon a time, and then you know, two hours later, and they all lived happily ever after. In fact, you never use those words in fiction because nobody lives forever after. And so the happy part is gone too. It's all like, it's, you know, there's a sadness at the center of our existence, which, which fiction writers acknowledge, and that is that we die. And everything we love vanishes. We can't hold on to anything. And so that, that's a given. So that's a sadness at the center of our life. But the nobility at the center of our lives is that we face that sadness and we go right on trying to hold on to everything that we love and go on falling in love again and all that sort of thing um, and cherishing life and um, and honoring it and giving praise to the world around us and we you know those of us who write do it by writing stories about it so the first thing you do when you want if you want to write a story is sit your ass in the chair you sit down and you do it and you pick up a pen and and you got a blank piece of paper or you sit down at a blank screen and you go you set off I usually start with a character that's in my head, I imagine, who's somehow intriguing to me. Something about this character is intriguing. It could be the way he looks. It could be something he said. It could be the house he lives in. Whatever. So I start with a character, and I give that character some trouble. And the, the plot is, uh, has to come out of the um, desires, wishes, behaviors, motivations of the characters. They drive the plot. There's a, a moment... Um, in every story, when your character does something that you didn't expect him to do, or says something that you didn't expect her to say, and that's the moment you're writing for, because that's when you now have like a human being at work on the page. You freed your imagination, in other words, and your imagination uh, has taken over, and, and that the critic, the critic. Uh, is not at the table anymore. You'll re-engage the critic later on when you're reading it over um, and trying to assess what's working and what's not working. But for right now, the, the, the creative part of you, um, the intuitive and, and uh, imaginative part of you has taken over. People have a romantic notion about writers that the muse comes in and you write, you're, you're inspired and then you write, but that's the, they've got it absolutely wrong. You write and then you are inspired. It doesn't happen the other way. And if they were a muse, that muse would only come to the writing desk, would not be at the football game with you tailgating, or would not be you know, uh, at the party. The muse comes to the desk if you're not there to that.